Hello, it's Dr. Gay from First Like MRI, and this is a 29-year-old female who complains of knee pain. She has not had any prior injury, just pain in the knee, so she went to her uh, doctor and they ordered this MRI of her left knee joint, and here we see her kneecap, and we note that the kneecap, instead of being straight, it looks like a V here along the bottom, it looks like it's tilted outwards. So we call this lateral patellar tilt. This is the lateral part here, and it's almost horizontal and the medial part is more vertical. So lateral patellar tilt, which is abnormal. Also, she has some mild lateral patellar subluxation. So normally, this is the femur, the big thigh bone, right at the apex of the femur. We have this point right here, and so the kneecap should line up with that, but we see that the apex of the kneecap is over here. So a little bit of lateral patellar subluxation, not bad, but there's also lateral patellar tilt. And we note that there's a little bit of white stuff here, a little bit of fluid, which is abnormal. This is a small joint effusion, alerting us to that there's something wrong here in the front of the knee. You can see the fluid going all the way across. Now we're gonna look at the sagittal view here. We're gonna see the kneecap. And on this view, the kneecap looks pretty small vertically, and the patellar tendon is pretty long. We call this patella alta, when the kneecap is high riding like this. And the patellar tendon length is more than 1.5 times the patellar height. Some people would say 1.3 times, but we can see here this is clearly too high, the kneecap, instead of gliding along the front of the femur here, it's way up here, so we call this patella alta, or high riding patella. Now if we look on this view going out more laterally, we see that the Hoffa's fat pad, there's a fat pad right here, this gray, very homogeneous, normal low signal. If we go out laterally, we see there's an area right here in the upper outer corner that is not gray, it's more bright. So this is an area of inflammation or pinching or irritation in the Hoffa's fat pad. We call this fatty impingement. We can see the same area over here, right in this area. So this is the lateral patellar retinaculum going over, and this is the fat getting impinged upon because of the abnormal mechanics of stress. So, so far we have mild lateral patellar subluxation, we have some borderline lateral patellar tilt, we have fatty impingement here, and these all go along with a patellar tracking disorder and pain in the anterior knee. Now, one last thing we're gonna look for is the patellar tendon where it attaches to the tibia. So here's the patellar tendon, it's going down, 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 and there's where it hits the tibia. And we go to this view, and we see I drew a line from the tibial tubercle, right where the patellar tendon attaches to this, which is the middle of the femur. So this is called the TT-TG distance, the uh, tibial tubercle to trochlear groove distance, and that should be 1.7 centimeters or less. This one's right at 1.7 centimeters, so it's just a borderline um, increased distance, but this can be associated with a patellar tracking disorder. So classic example, everything else looks really good. There's no arthritis in the knee, no marrow edema. The meniscus here on the medial side looks great. Lateral meniscus looks great. ACL looks great. So normal knee everywhere else, just patellar tracking disorder. So when patients have a patellofemoral alignment problem like this and abnormal mechanics and they're symptomatic, the orthopedic surgeon can re-implant this tibial tubercle. They can take where the patellar tendon attaches and move it over. They call it a uh, tibial tubercle shift or transposition procedure and that can make a more normal anatomic alignment of the patellofemoral mechanism here. And that's it. Thank you very much. Hope you have a wonderful day.